We're back in North London today as we see 10th against 7th for Wingate and Finchley against Met Police. Welcome to match day 33. Wet conditions await both these sides for this Bostic Premier Division encounter and they both come into the game having won their last fixture. They also have identical records in their last five games, having won two, lost two and drawn one. It's a very good afternoon to uh, Gary Pascoe and Mick Sullivan, who join me uh, in the commentary area as usual. Not seen winning get officially this season, Mick, but judging by their pitch, we're expecting them to play fluent passing football. You would if you had a pitch like this. I think they try, but they'll also try to hit the front men and uh, get in on goal very quickly. But both teams have had a bit of indifferent form of late, but uh, Met Police are more the informed team with the light, not unbeaten in the last four and obviously uh, Wingate have been a bit up and down over the last few weeks but they're still in 10th position looking to progress where Met Police are in 7th so you know teams that are on the fringes of the playoff and they want to be picking up three points so competitive game and let's take a look at both teams for Wingate and Finchley they'll be looking towards Mark Charles Smith signed from Harrow Borough at the beginning of the season and Reese Beckles Richards for their goals today as for Met Police They'll be without Lloyd Mackling, who scored 14 goals for them this season. He's suspended. They do have Alec Fidders, the ex-Kingstonian player, in their ranks as well, recently signed. And the ball's still with Ooh. Met Police, and it was a good shot in the end that needed to be tipped over by Shane Gore. A long way out there, and a really good effort. Then I already feel Met Police are going to miss uh, Lloyd Macklin. 14 goals. They've not really got another goal scorer in their ranks. And uh, to miss someone so important on a two match suspension, Jim must be kicking it. You know, really annoyed the fact that, it, it, that he's missing this game. Very, very important game. Referee signals to play on. I fall with a throw. In it goes. It is long into the 18-yard box, flicked on, and it needed to be dealt with by Gasson, the skipper. It comes back at Gasson, he deals with it again, and eventually the ball will fall to Riffert, who just, on his left foot volley, skews the ball wide. Decent opportunity, though, Gary. Yep, again, another nice long throw. Didn't really deal with the throw properly, uh, Met Police. Just got the ball out to the 18-yard box, and uh, uh, Riffert had a good shot, and he just, well, about five or 10-yard shot wide of the goal. And it's the visitors who have the ball again with Gasson goes all the way wide. And they can get the cross in now. In it comes. It's flicked away. Only falls to a Met Police player. This could be a real opportunity. Jinkin run into the box. Keeper saves. I think it was going wide. It was a good run from Alec Fedges, the Kingstonian player. Yeah, that's a good signing by um, Jim Cooper. That was uh, Alex is a very tricky winger for Kingstonian and had many a good game there. I was surprised that Lee let him go. But uh, it, all people have to move on, I suppose. And uh, I think that's a good acquisition for Jim Cooper at Met Police. It will be a corner to the visitors. In it comes the corner. It's towards the keeper again. Gets a punch on it. Only as far as the edge of the box. Goes all the way out to the corner taker. Goes back in. And this time, it's much more comfortable from Shane Gore. He can just grab that. Fair few chances already for the visitors. Again, Met Police come forward. You have to say they've had a little bit more of the ball. It's going to be a shot there that's fired in from Jonathan Wright, who found himself 25 yards out on his right foot. Yeah, another good effort there. Just, uh, just like we say, just wider the goal. But, you know, good build-up, good passenger play down the left wing for uh, Met Police. Put the ball in just outside the 18-yard box. And Wright, with a good shot, just uh, just wider the goal. Going back to that question you, give, you said, Ben, Obviously, the, their managers give them instruction to go out on the pitch, but once the players get on the pitch, they've got to manage the game properly. They've got to know when 
to hit a long pass or hit a shorter pass like then the right back for uh, Wingate just hit a long ball and it got intercepted attack from Met Police here the Met Police coming forward again and this is what well, we mentioned got to be quicker and Ooh. it was a decent effort not sure the keeper quite needed to tip it around the post but it's difficult to judge from this angle it will be a corner and again it was Alex Fajez who shows his skill Mick yeah, great skill. I mean, I thought that was a good acquisition for, for Jim when I saw that transfer go through last week and um, he's proven it so today. I've just been working out the formations while we've been having a bit of a break. Obviously, to, uh, Met Police is uh, shaping up 3-5-2 and uh, Wingate a 4-4-2, but basically their right-hand midfield player, uh, Reese Beckles Richard, really comes in and, and patrols and gets in the front line very quickly. Yeah. And this is a great ball forward. It could be a chance here for Wingate as they drive into the box of Oberfam. He just did the hard part there. It was a great ball. And in the final few moments, he was marshalled off it. Great defending. And now Met Police will win the free kick. I do wonder whether he might change his shape and match them in the second half. And got the header wrong and chance for Wingate to perhaps get themselves forward and Met Police would kick themselves if they did go in at half time 1-0 down after their performance so far it's delivered into the box and goes away from everybody and it will be a goal kick just a mistake there from Gasson almost let Wingate in for their first real chance of the game well yeah for all the playing domination they've had in this game you're right they've not really they've had a couple of sort of reasonable shots at the goal keeper that he's uh got down and saved but other than that you're right for all the good positions they've got in and around the 18 yard box they should have worked the keeper harder at least or got a few more shots on target so so Jim will be a little bit disappointed with his forwards when they've had those opportunities but he'd be more than happy with his defence it's the home side that are coming forward now chance for a cross and again they don't do it and again they're going to come back no idea why that ball has not gone into the box and obviously that's in the game plan I might be made to eat my words here as it comes in it's flicked off and eventually Met Police will get it away and I can only think now Gary that that is part of the game plan because we saw there Mavilla have two three opportunities to cross that ball in and he didn't do it and just laid it back across the box and the Wingate and Finchley team are in their mixture of blue and black with black shorts and black socks going from left to right as we look and the visitors met police in the very Dutch-like orange and they might get the first opportunity and it just slipped. First real opportunity of the game, it fell to Ollie Robinson yeah. just outside the six-yard box and he slipped at the vital moment. Both people, both players slipped and the defender slipped and then Ollie Robinson just about to volley the ball into the goal and he slipped and uh, then they got the ball away bitter cold it really is <laughs> typical January day <clears throat> and just maybe gentlemen it might get a bit colder in February before it gets warmer now this is a chance for Wingate and Finchley it's really good play plenty of bodies back for the visitors and again it was Ollie Robinson who cleared it certainly up there for candidate for man of the match so far uh, funny enough, I was just talking to Gary as we come back for the second half. You know, I'd, uh, at the minute I'm looking at a centre back, and Gary's was uh, was uh, Gaston, and mine was Ollie Robinson. So it's quite interesting. You know, I'm normally a forward and winger man, as you well know, but uh, let's see. Plenty of time for someone to change it. It's the first goal of the game, and he's scored by Obafemi. Obafemi yeah. Puts that ball in. Delightful corner came in for the home sides. And it was Obafemi just rose the highest to put that in the top corner. No chance for the keeper. And almost against the run of play this afternoon, Wingate and Finchley take the lead. Well, <laughs> Gary, you'd like to say whose man was he? You know, exactly. The three centre backs, one should be picking him up, particularly, big lad. And he had a free header, good header, good crossing, good goal. Wingate 1 0 up. And then we're talking about. Met Police have had all the play in the first half. Exactly, you know, who was marking him? He was a great delivery, great corner, and he's just rose above all the defenders. No one marking him. Free header and put the ball straight in the goal. Super goal. Wingate retaining possession and just a little differences, Gary, with those passes that are going in. Look at that across the pitch now, and you just weren't seeing any of this in the first half. It was long ball, 
and they've completely changed almost the way they're playing here. <laughs> it's very, very strange how a goal can do that to a team. And like you say, they're moving the ball quickly. They've got runners, like the guy number 10 from Wingate getting behind the back four now. Yeah, that was a great run from Reese Speckles Richards. And then cut out by the Met Police defence. And again, it's uh, Wingate that come forward, an opportunity now, plenty of room for Beckles Richards to run into. Can he shoot? Pratt crowd urging him to do so, does shoot, goes wide, and you have to say, he took the right option though to give that a go from there. Well, swiped at it and uh, obviously just spinned it out of play. Yeah, he should have really got a strike on target for such a, he is a good player, Reese Beckles. It's been very precisely placed down that ball for the corner by Bird, and again, his arms go up and going to be left-footed, driven in. It's going to go right. towards the head of gas and goes over oh. everybody and almost trickles in the corner of the net and it just bounced past that far post. And yeah. For, for all the careful placement of that ball, it seemed to do the trick. Yeah. Unlucky. Again, wasn't a real 100% chance. He's just got a head to it, but he didn't get a full head to the ball. He's got his head to it and just glanced and it just went wide of the goal. 25 minutes left of the game. 1-0 to Wingate and Finchley, who are much the inferior side in the first half, but they've found a little bit of their mojo and they're about to get a free kick and it's Ollie Robinson who gives it away. Will the referee go to his pocket? He's not going to. I felt he won the ball Yeah, there. I won a foul. I felt, I Sorry. the referee was a bit harsh on yeah, him. Yeah, he's you done know, well. That was a very strong tackle. You know, that this boy out here at the minute is giving it his all and he's rallying his team for such a young lad. You know, he's doing really well. And it's going to fall to a Wingate Finchley player, and that was an effort from Rob Laney on the volley. Nevertheless, he's got number two on, so I'm sure that Ryland Myers won't mind. Go. Oh, what a block. Ball came across. It was a really good block by the Wingate player. Laney, goes I think it was. Laney goes out for another corner. Now Wingate will win it back, and now a chance for the home side to break if they can get this ball right. Plenty of players back, though, for... Met Police and that's a delightful ball that goes all the way through and they are in and this could be 2-0 is it? Great defending, last ditch defending there. That was absolutely superb. Not quite sure who I think that it's was. That's Mumby. I think that's Mumby number number 10. It is and all. All the way back in there with a last ditch challenge and they worked that really well, Met Police. They definitely did, yeah. And yeah. they're in again now and this could be a real opportunity. It's a three against three. What can they do? All the way across and he just gets the ball wrong and in the end it's Ollie Robinson. All about choices, they say, Gary, and perhaps yeah. that one was the wrong one. End-to-end -end action now in this game, which I didn't think was possible inside the first half, but become a little bit more exciting. A goal has helped that. Bird with a corner, and it comes from that police. Need to grab a goal. It's a really poor corner, and then it will go back out to Bird. Can he redeem himself on his left foot? This time he puts it in high towards the keeper. Keeper just about parries it away. Referee didn't blow the whistle, and Wingate will get the ball away. No, they've done well, Wingate. They weathered that storm that met police last 15, 20 minutes. They've, they've, uh, they were. I thought they might nick a goal, to be fair, but uh, they've, uh, they've, they've weathered with, they weathered the storm, weathered the storm. They have. Hold on. Oh. Could be a chance here for Wingate. Will it be two 0 And they just put it back, and still a chance for a shot. And they just looked to shoot, but couldn't quite get that shot off. It was the substitute there, Monville, who perhaps had an opportunity to shoot. It's going to come all the way back through to Ifill. He'll take his time, go back to Monville, we'll put the ball in and Gasson will clear that's bread and butter for the Met Police centre-back and he's not going to get the goal. Bird is going to have the free kick on his left foot, usually got a good delivery and it goes. It looks far too close to the keeper. Keeper's not going to get it though, but it's bouncing around. Could be a goal. Not sure how that didn't go towards the goal. The keeper got a touch on his back, I think, and he yeah. didn't know anything about it. It went towards the keeper and he's not the tallest, is he? And no, it didn't seem to grab that ball. It looked a little bit suspect in the air. On a couple of occasions, the keeper, Shane Gort. Yeah, delayed with the three points. Um, thought our overall player was a bit untidy, but sometimes the weather and the pitch dictates that type of situation. But yes, yeah, it's, it's three hard-earned points, which you always expect a hard game against them at. In the first half, a lot of the passes that were going long weren't reaching their target. You seemed to come out with a, a real sense of purpose in the, in the second half. Well, we felt that um, we needed to look after the ball in their final third a little bit better. Going forward, we felt that we were a bit nervous on the ball, um, which I don't think we really needed to be. So uh, if, if, our, if our play was a little bit better, we could have opened them up, you know.
I thought it was a, a foul. I think he got pushed by two hands in the back. Uh, but even so, we should have dealt with that corner much, much better. That was the only shot, I think, on target they had in 90 minutes. Um, I mean, I don't think we created magnificent chances, but I think their keeper made, had to make about nine or ten saves. Um, I mean, I don't know how we lost that game, if I'm honest, but you're right, defensively from that corner was poor. Where can the rest of the season take you? I don't know, you know, we've, we've, we've found ourselves in the, in the top ten pretty much all season. I, I would like to stay there. I think um, with the points we have, we finished on 75 last year. 75 mightn't be enough this year to make the playoffs, but who knows? Because at the end of the day, we can only go, us nine, I think we've got 19 games left or something like that. We just need to concentrate on the old scenario of one game at a time because I've got a small group, small squad of players, and I've got to look after them because we've got a lot of games coming up in a short period of time. Uh, they're a very young side, our boys, and um, you know sometimes they they go out of games and um, they can't pick themselves up again. And um, second half, I think Wingate uh, were worthy of uh, probably getting the winning overall uh, because of their second half performance. What do you take out of a game like today, and how can you take that into your next game? Well, I thought we actually played some decent football today. Uh, we haven't been doing that in recent weeks. We set ourselves up. I came and watched these against Leeds the other week. Um, we look to get the ball wide, especially in the first half, and then try and put good deliveries in there. Um, but um, yeah, so I was very pleased with the football we played. Uh, we created some good chances, especially in the first half. Congratulations, Ollie. I made you the Bostic man of the match today. Can you give me your feelings? Proud? Um, I am, but I'm just so disappointed. We've lost the game. Um, I'd rather get a win than me get man of the match all day of the week. You've got to be disappointed in how you conceded that goal. Can you have your thoughts on that, being a stout defender yourself and uh, conceding such a yeah, poor goal? It's hard. Every goal that you get from a set piece is really disappointing. But I think there might have been a push in the back there. I'm not 100% sure, so hopefully we can look back on the footage and see that. Um, but when it's in the box, it's hard to tell. If there's a... How are you coping with being made the captain? I thought you had a fantastic game. You led the back line really, really well. Can I ask you how old you are now? You must be 21, 22. Yeah, I'm 23 now. Um, I've got a captain's armband because we've got a couple of injuries with Will and Hickey. Um, but I think it's adding more to my game. I take the responsibility of the team. So today I'm really disappointed with that result. Plenty of other games across the Bostic Premier Division this afternoon and we start our round up with Dorking Wanderers against Harlow Town.
can he come up with? Dulles, number 10. It's brilliant. Off the crossbar and in. And his goal drill from free kicks comes to an end. Sensational Ashley Carew free kick. The sort we've seen so many times in his three and a half years at the club. Absolutely perfect, that one. Just clipped the underside of the crossbar. Little Ashley Jones could do as a spectator in all that. He stepped up, got it over the wall, and just enough dip to clip the underside of the crossbar. And beat Ashley Jones. Dulwich do lead. All delivers. Could go. Penny's there, 1 1. He's had so little of the ball all game. And a rebound falls nicely for him in the penalty area. And Merston, out of nowhere, have levelled this game. Paul's free kick was deep. I think Weatherstone cleared against a teammate. Falls to Penny, he wasn't going to miss from there. Here he comes. Has flicked on 2 1. It's Penny again. Merson have turned this game on its head. Well, no one would have seen this coming five minutes ago. Short corner sent in by Ryan Hall. And Penny heads home his second. All of a sudden, this game has taken a horrible turn for the Hamlet. Penny with his second goal in four minutes. Bitterly cold afternoon in North London and a bitter taste left in the mouth of the Met Police players who felt they probably should have got at least a point here today. It's Wingate that take all three points and we're back in North London next week as we see Harrow Borough take on Margate.